we finally in 2001 we sealed the, the showing left ventricular assist devices improves survival, saves lives. This one was a, a big cornerstone for uh, uh, for the Alvat <coughs> the devices uh, rematch trial, and uh, it, there was a statistically significant reduction on the uh, the um, Death when you compare with the medical treatment, and uh, one year of survival was 52. But this one was a big pump, and, and the problem was also the durability. And so it was uh, in 30, usually around 36 months, the pump was wearing off, and patient coming to the ER with the hand pump trying to keep them alive. and rushing into the operating room to change the, um, to, to, to the pump with the replacing with the new one. Despite all these um, the advancements, still we have problems to, uh, in order to barriers to treating the less sick patients. A stroke is still a problem that Dr. DeBakey mentioned uh, those uh, in many, many years ago. RV failure, GI bleedings, infection, rehospitalization and recently change in the reallocation system in 2018. So after 2018, to in order to decrease the uh, transplant waitlist mortality and transplant waitlist time, uh, the organs donations start to give a, a priority to the, the sick people, and and on on. On the reflection of that, the durable alvet numbers are decreased incredibly. But what <coughs> um, this allocation system is, it changed good things, but in the same time, we are, we are transplanting the sicker people, and because of that, we have a little lower outcomes in the first year uh, 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 mortality. But, well, that's the, that's the um, after five years now, again, wait list time increasing because we are gaming the system. Everyone is getting a bloom pump in the ICU and to, in order to get a transplant. And, and because of that also, the wait list is getting bigger again. It's the, this year is 13% is bigger than last year. So we are going with a new answer to the old, old problems again. So this is one of the examples that I was involved with the, each surgery as in different, as a fel, re, resident fellow and, and as a junior attending. It's a great story. This is a young lady and, and was, came with a non-ischemic cardiomyopathy and we put a heart made two device and she was in one year and Dr. Uh, Frazier is the big uh, proponent of the, the recovery. So we removed the uh, device after a one year and she lived 11 years without the device and then she failed while she was in the trip into the Colorado and came back and we were in that time in uh, Memorial Hermann. He, she came and we put a replaced, uh, placed the hardware and after that, two years of hardware tr uh, uh, support, she got transplanted. And she had 14 years of without the trans time without the transplant. And a young female in 14 years, I mean, if you look at the UNOS data, probably 70, 75% she would be dead by now. But now she's starting something again, and then there's a retransplant. So it gives a pretty long lifespan. And I think this philosophy is very important and is not very much uh, practiced in anywhere else that we should, we should um, take ownership and, and, and lead the medicine. A great paper for Dan from Danny um, that um, looking at, uh, that I highlighted, you can, we could, we can 70% uh, successfully wean these people, save these hearts in, in a cardiogenic shock, uh, acute cardiogenic shock settings. So 
there is an opportunity here that we still we are practicing that uh, in, the, in acute cardiogenic shock that this patient came uh, with a terrible instational disease and in 60s not a candidate for transplant or LVAT and severe left main and as well as uh, right coronary artery and if you look at the right heart cats the wage pressure is 28 PA pressures are increased total of failing cardiac index 1.9 this is a true uh, the if he was a uh, suitable LVAT patient but there is no other option. So here is the, um, the videos that uh, critical stenosis in, in uh, uh, left main. And he is, and this is the, is the ventricle. It's not moving at all. And then we put a Impala 5.5 on this patient. And then we supported him successfully. But the thing is that here, <sighs> Impala 5.5 does not treat these patients. I mean, um, great work by uh, Dr. Smalling, Richard Smalling, again, with using a hemopump. He showed that in 19, early 90s and published that the, the, these pumps reduces the, the area of the infarct, but it doesn't prevent the infarct. 